So I'm making this video for those of you that missed Tuesday's class. Um, we went over the InDesign demo and I did collect a grade for those. Um, so it's not necessarily the fact that you missed the grade. It's more or less the fact that you missed the knowledge that you'll gain on this. So you'll need to do this if you want to be able to be successful with the business card project. So if, go ahead and go into the Brightspace shell and go to week 10. Come down here to the download, the demo files. It says download me next to it. Just go ahead and click on this arrow and push download. Um, I've already done it. I already have it in my downloads, so I don't need to do that. But make sure you download this file, this zip file. Then let's go into InDesign. That might You might have to go into your applications folder in the finder to find your InDesign. Um, and then we want to go, before we do anything, we just want to open it. We want to go to InDesign, Preferences, Units and Increments. And we want to put the horizontal and the vertical to inches. So yours will probably be on Picas or Picas. We want to change that to inches on the horizontal and vertical. Once you get that done, that'll be good. You don't need to change anything else here and then just push OK. For some reason, InDesign defaults to Picas or Picas. Not quite sure how to say that but you need to switch it over the vertical and horizontal two inches before you do anything. So we can do new file to start our file. Let's go to print up here in the upper thing. Let's view all presets by clicking on this plus. We'll go to US business card, 3.5 inches wide. If this isn't on inches, go ahead and put it on inches, two inches high, uncheck facing pages, A little checkbox there, uncheck that. Put two pages in underneath pages. Uh, we don't need to worry about anything else here. We don't need to worry about the columns, but we do need to open up this bleed and slug area. And I would just click one time underneath the top here on this top arrow, and it'll put 0.125 in top, bottom, left, and right. And that will do it. Push create. And as you can see, here's our InDesign document. Um, you can go over here. Let's go to window workspace before we do anything. And let's go to essentials classic. Um, I'm just going to go to Reset Essentials Classic because I think I actually edited mine. Um, so let's o expand this and let's take out these libraries. I'm not going to work with these right now. Um, and then we do need our Properties panel. So let's go to Window Properties to open the Properties panel. And we'll just nest this. We'll grab it here, almost like an internet browser window, and just nest it underneath there. So that Properties is the last one here. And we can actually open that up by clicking on it. And having that fly out. Okay, so if we kind of do a command minus, we can see here, let's go to the pages over here. So this is the pages. This is page one. If we double click, we can go to page two. They both look exactly the same, so it's kind of hard to tell which one we're on. But which, whichever one is highlighted in this pages panel will be the one that we're on. So we're on page one now and we're on page two here. But let's go back to page one by double clicking on it. Let's close that up. Here's layers, here's links. I'll be explaining this panel later. Um, stroke, color, Swatches, which are preloaded swatches, you can get different swatches um, from different, you can get different swatches if you want to get different spot swatches. You can load your own swatches or we can find other color themes. Um, so yeah, the properties panel is probably going to be your best friend. Uh, the links panel is important. The pages panel is very important. So, um, so let's go ahead and start Let's do a file save as to save this file. So I'm going to go into my documents. I'm going to go into graphic design 231 because I have a class folder I made. Um, I'm going to make a new folder in design demo. I'm going to make mine two because I already did this one time. InDesign is spelled with a capital D if you want to get that correct. That's how it's spelled. So create that, and then we'll go inside there, and we'll name our file now. Um, it's going to be an InDesign document, the format of it, which is good. Um, I'm going to put my first name and InDesign demo. I'm going to put two since this is the second one I've done. Um, but you would put your first name, InDesign demo, and then push save. Okay, so we will start bringing in some files, and we do it the same way we did it in Illustrator and Photoshop. We do a file place. So let's go to the demo file folder in our documents. Um, let's see. Where are those? I thought I had, oh no, in our download, sorry. So here's my demo file that I downloaded. I'm going to put it on columns so I can see. Um, so here's a JPEG file of an illustration. Here's a, 
here's a portrait of Bob Dylan. So let's go ahead and bring the portrait file in, Bob Dylan portrait.jpg file. So we'll just click that in. And as you can see, when we do that, it's huge. So there's actually an easier way to do this. Push delete, delete that. Grab this tool here. It's the rectangle frame tool. So let's click on that. Let's drag it out all the way to the edges of that red bleed line. So make sure if you don't see that red bleed line, push W on your keyboard and you will see it. And now let's do a file place. And we'll bring in that portrait file with Bob Dylan and it'll be a little bit smaller. And we can actually, in the properties panel, if you don't have this open, make sure you have it open. You might have to go into window properties to make sure the check is on. And let's try experimenting with a couple different frame fitting options that are here. Um, so we can fit content proportionally. We can fit, uh, we can auto fit it, um, which actually I think works pretty well. I think pretty good. Um, so let's go ahead and open up Illustrator. So get into Illustrator. Let's do a file new. And we are just going to make, we're going to print and we're going to make a letter size document. Make sure it's in inches. So eight and a half by 11 is good. CMYK color, 300 PPI, push create. So this will be our document that we've set up. And then if we do a file place, we can bring in, um, the logo that I actually have in the demo folder. So let's go here. Let's go to the Bob Dylan logo.png. So let's place that. Command minus just to get a full view. Use the free transform tool to size this, or you can just grab it by the corner, I believe, without the free transform tool. Push shift down on your keyboard so that it doesn't get distorted. Then do a command zero to bring it back to fit to screen here. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So we're in Illustrator right now. And then we will select this and do make sure that you're in Window, Workspace, Essentials Classic. Make sure you have this selected with the black arrow tool. Go to Image Trace, push OK. It'll think for a little bit and then push Expand. So now we can use the white arrow tool and we can delete the white background and all the white shapes that are probably still going to be inside of all of the closed leather letters. Okay, so here we have this Bob Dylan logo now that we can bring into InDesign. So we're in Illustrator right now. We'll do a Command C, and let's go ahead and go into InDesign down here in our dock. And let's go to page one. We're still on page one. Let's zoom in by Command Plus on the keyboard. If we push W, we can actually see what our design, our actual edges of our business card are going to be. If we push W again, we can see where the bleed line is. Okay, so let's do a command V to bring that logo in. It's quite big, so I'm going to zoom out, command minus. Make sure to use the free transform tool in InDesign to size things. Push shift and drag from the corner. The whole time you have shift held down so that you don't lose um, proportions on this. And so here's the color. We can actually go over to the properties panel and change the fill color on our text. And we're just going to use this preloaded red color it looks good on black and white and we'll bring this down in size even a little bit more and we'll move it over um, maybe what we'll do is we'll push w and let's move this over a little bit and let's see how much okay so maybe something like that let's push w again so we can see where we're at that looks pretty good so let's go into our demo file again and let's open up the text document PDF document that's in there. Um, so we want to grab this title, Poet and Musician. So we'll do Command C to copy that, and then we'll click back into InDesign, grab the text tool, drag and hold down, click out, drag out a text box, and then do Command B. And then we'll do a Command A, or just use your text or your highlighter thing and to get the get your cursor in there and, and highlight the text. And then let's change this color over here in the properties panel the fill color to that same red color. Okay, so let's put this under here. Let's nest it in underneath Bob Dylan. That looks pretty good. Okay, and then we'll move on to page two. That's the front of our business card. Um, it's not quite done yet, but we'll finish that up later. Um, let's go to page two, command zero. 
I'm going to zoom out one time because my properties panel is kind of in the way. Let's do a file place to bring in the back cover or back um, panel that we want to bring in. So this is what we're wanting on our the back of our business card basically is what I'm trying to say. So here's the illustration. Um, actually, we need to use the frame tool. Let's push W so we can see the bleed line. Let's drag a box out all the way to the bleed line. <clears throat> and then let's do a file place to bring that illustration, Bob Dylan illustration or Bob illustration in. Open that and then let's use the frame fitting to get that to size. I think um, this particular um, option under frame fitting, which is fill frame proportionally, is going to be the best one. And so the blue frame is the frame that we, we drug out. But if we use the white arrow tool and click on this, we can actually move our file within the frame. So let's go ahead and move that over to the side a little bit. Ooh, not too far. Push W so we can actually see what the real business card might look like. Something like that. So our blue frame is still there. But if you click on the white arrow tool, you can actually see the JPEG file. And if you click and hold down on it, actually push W, click and hold down on that, you can see the file within the frame. And you can actually crop this image within InDesign without having to use Photoshop, which is kind of nice. Um, OK, so let's go back into the text document in our demo. And let's open that up. And let's put. Um, let's put the contact information in there next. So Command C, all of the phone number, the email, and the website. So let's grab the text. We Command C that, and then we'll do a Command V to bring that in, and we'll do Command A or you know to select everything in that text box. We'll bring this down to about uh, nine points, and then we'll change the color of the text here to that same red color we've been using. Let's click here where where his email is and let's put everything on one line and I'm going to put a space and then push option and eight on my keyboard to get this nice little dot and put another space I'm going to get rid of the https colon backslash backslash because that's kind of messy space option eight to get the dot and then another space um, let's center align all of this so let's just triple click in here we can use the center here or under paragraph in the properties panel Let's make our text box as wide as the business card is, just to get it perfect. And then let's move it down with our arrow on our keyboard. You can push Shift down to move it in increments of 10, which is a little bit faster. That's pretty good. Um, and then let's bring in the quote that we have in here, or the slogan, rather. Command C. And then let's grab the text. And then we'll do a Command V to paste. Um, click here right after in between these two characters, the T and the quotes, and then use command and backslash. Um, backslash should be underneath your delete um, key on, if you're on a Mac. And so let's put a period in here because I forgot that. Let's keep this black because I actually like it. Let's, let's make sure this is shrunk up around our text so it's not huge. And let's just push shift down to bring it in increments of 10 so, so we can go a little bit faster. And let's line this up with that. So we'll just tuck it in a little bit further, maybe something like that. And let's make sure this space and this space are fairly similar, which they do look pretty similar. OK, so that's looking pretty good. We have all of our information in our business card. Now what we need to do is actually let's push W click on this image and let's just crop out this white that's in here. So we have to go to the very edge of his hair there and just clip that image back using the black arrow tool. Now let's use the rectangle frame tool and click and drag a box here. And let's, it will automatically put a, a frame on or a stroke of black on it, but we can actually switch that black color into here with this little arrow and that'll put it in the fill. And then let's use the eyedropper tool. So I'll show you how the eyedropper tool works. Make sure that this box is currently selected. Use the eyedropper tool and click down. So we'll get the same color here. And just make sure it's going all the way to the bleed line or past it. It can even go past it. But let's just make sure this is nice and neat and do an arrange send to back. So as you can see, that's looking pretty nice. And I'm going to have to finish this up in the next video.